Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at how to convert our images to black and white as well as how to add some color toning like a sepia tone effect to it. We're going to add a post crop vignette and also take a look at the grain feature. So here we're going to start in the basic panel. I want to convert this image to black and white and I can do that a number of different ways. Probably the easiest would be to select the black and white option here in the basic panel but when you do that you don't have a lot of control. So if you actually want to control the way that the different colors in your image are converted to different shades of gray, then you'll scroll down and here under HSL color and black and white, you'll click where it says black and white. Here we can see that Lightroom has automatically converted the different color ranges differently for this specific image. But of course we can go in and change that. So we can use the sliders here and for example if I choose the yellow slider I can lighten by dragging to the right or darken by dragging to the left and basically what that's doing is it's just telling Lightroom how to take the yellow color range and convert it to gray. Of course I can also do this using the targeted adjustment tool by simply clicking on it and then clicking anywhere in my image in this case where it's yellow and dragging up to make it lighter and clicking and dragging down in order to make it darker. So let's go ahead and just lighten up the yellows a little. You can see that not only are the yellows moving but also the oranges. If I wanted to darken the sky I would click in the sky area and drag down. And if I wanted to darken or lighten what was this green area down here I can click and drag up to lighten or click and drag down in order to darken. So you can see you can really customize the way that Lightroom converts your image from color to grayscale. Now if I wanted to add maybe a color tone to this image I would move down to the split toning panel. Here you can see that I can add a different hue to the highlights and the shadows and then I can use the balance option here to kind of determine where the shadows and the highlights cross over if I want to get like a cross process effect. But let's begin by just adding maybe a sepia tone. If I want to mimic the traditional sepia tone then I'll want to be sure that I add the color in the darker areas here so I would use the shadow slider. If I'm not sure what color is sepia but I want to see the hue at 100% I can hold down the option key on the Mac or the alt key on Windows and then click and drag the hue slider. You can see as I drag it through the different hues I'm actually previewing that color at 100%. So in order to pick kind of a sepia color I'm going to select something right maybe around, around 25 or so. Then I'll let go of the option or the alt key and I can use the saturation slider to just dial in a little bit of that color. Now as we can see from the image I'm getting this sepia tone in the shadow areas but I'm also kind of getting too much color for me anyway in the mid-tone area. So that's when the balance slider comes in. If I move the balance slider to the right you can see that I no longer have that sepia tone in my mid-tone areas. It's really confined to the shadow areas. If I move the balance slider to the left we can see that we have a lot more color going into not only the mid-tones but also the highlight area. So obviously that's just a personal choice but I'm going to bring the balance slider over to the right quite a ways. Now if this is an effect that I like and I want to apply this effect on multiple images then I would probably create a preset. And the way that you create a preset is right over here in the preset area. You can see that I've got a number of different presets that I've already created but Lightroom also ships with a number of presets. I'll move up to the top now and just click on the plus icon and I'm going to call this my sepia preset. And now I get to determine what all I want to contain in that preset. So in this case I don't want the white balance but instead I want the auto black and white mix. This is going to tell Lightroom when I apply this to a new image to go ahead and analyze that image and convert it to grayscale. And then I'm going to also include the split toning so I get the sepia tone. So now with just a single click I can choose this preset and apply it to another image. I'm going to save this in my user presets folder, click create. We can see that it's right there and now if I move to another image and I want to apply that same preset all I need to do is click on it here in the preset area.
So any time that you make changes that you think you want to apply to multiple images, I mean, obviously you could just select the next image and then click on synchronize, but maybe if it's a week later or two weeks later, it's really handy to be able to have that preset. And I have a number of different presets here. Let's just scroll up and we'll take a look at some of my single color split toning presets. I'll use the little disclosure triangle in order to preview them. And as I position my cursor on top of the presets, you can actually see what that preset would look like by looking up here in the navigator area. So I don't even have to apply the preset in order to get a preview of it. If I find a preset that I like better and I want to apply it, all I then need to do is click on it. So all of these presets are actually available on my blog and you can download them for either Mac or Windows. So all you need to do is go to blogs.adobe.com slash jcost, J-K-O-S-T, and there's the ability to search in the upper right hand corner. In fact, if you just search for zip, as in a zip file, then all of the presets that I have posted will be listed right there for you to download. All right, let's talk about instead of adding the color to the shadow area, let's see what happens when we add it to the highlight area. So to reset the shadows, I'm gonna double click where it says shadows, and we're gonna focus on the highlights. In this case, I wanna make this look like it's an antiqued image, so I'm going to add a yellow color in the highlights. I'll hold down the Option key or the Alt key, and then just drag this over so that I pick the yellow that I want. I'll let go of the Option or the Alt key, and then simply drag in the amount of saturation. And again, I'm gonna use the balance slider. This time I'm going to move it to the left so that I'm only getting a little bit of yellow in the highlight area. See, if I move it over to the right, you can see I'm getting that yellow in the mid-tone area. And if you think about it, in aged photo, what's happening is the actual paper is turning white, so I don't really want that much white down there in my mid-tone. So I'm just gonna move the balance up a little bit and to the left. Of course, if I wanted to do a more creative effect, like maybe a cross-process effect, then I can add color to both the shadow and the highlights. So in fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to change the hue for my shadows to kind of more of a cyan color and then dial that in. And then I'll change the hue for my highlights to be more of a red effect. And then we can just dial that in and again, we can use that balance slider in order to set the crossover from where the shadows and the highlights change from that blue to red. And again, if this was something that I liked and I wanted to apply it again and again, I would go ahead and save a preset. All right, so let's go ahead and move to the next image here. Here, what I wanna do is I don't wanna completely convert this to black and white, meaning I wanna leave a little bit of the color in the image. So in order to do that, instead of going to black and white, I'm gonna click where it says HSL, and I'm going to move to the saturation area, and we're just gonna bring the saturation down maybe about you know, negative 85 or 90 for all the different color ranges. Then if I wanna go in and simply adjust like the reds, I can move that up to give them a little bit more color and I might move the green down a little bit more to desaturate it. So you can see the advantage here would be that I can manipulate each one of these color ranges individually. Whereas if I was using maybe the basic panel, trying to use vibrance or saturation, it would be desaturating them all. But now I can be much more selective. I can have a lot more control. Then we'll go ahead and come down to the effects area and I'm gonna add a really strong vignette right now so that we make sure that we see what all the different sliders do. So I'll add a strong dark vignette. Of course, I could also add a light vignette if I wanted to, but we'll go dark for now. Then my midpoint can be changed so that it goes closer into the center of the image or is only affecting the edges of the image. The roundness, I can bring this out so that the effect affects the edges more in a rectangular way or we can bring this in to be more of a circle. I'll go ahead and leave it more rectangular. And then you can see what's happening with the feather. If I take the feather off, I get a hard edge. If I add a feather, I get a soft edge. Now, I wanna change this style from highlight to color priority. It's just gonna be a lot softer of a vignette. I also think that the amount is way too much, so let's go ahead and back off on that a little bit. And if I wanna make sure that I don't darken down the highlight areas here, I can use my highlight slider. And you can see, especially up in the corner here, 
how it's not going to darken down the clouds as much. They won't tend to look as muddy if you use that highlight slider. But the best thing about this post crop vignette is if I tap the R key because I want to crop this image and I crop in and maybe over like this, when I click done or tap the return or enter key, Lightroom will actually recreate the vignette based on that crop. All right, let's scroll down a little bit more and let's take a look at the different grain options. Here I'm going to increase the amount to 100% so that we can really see the grain. In fact, I might even just zoom in on this area here so that you can see the difference. So this is with as much grain as you can add. We can also increase the size here. Of course, we're going to lose detail in the image, but it gives this kind of really nice soft effect and we can change the roughness. So we can either make the grain look really rough and strong and bold, or we can move it over to the left where it's a little bit more subtle. It actually looks a lot more like a process that we traditionally would get in the darkroom called reticulation. So really it's up to you however you want to change these sliders to get the effect that you want that basically tells the story that you want to tell with your image. All right, let's zoom out. One of the things you might need to do if you are printing this image is you might actually need to print some test strips with varying amounts of grain just until you get comfortable with the amount of grain that you like on your images. And finally, let's take a look at one last special effect. I'm going to use this image here. And what I'd like to do is I would like to just have one chair that's left in red. But of course, if I take the rest of the image to grayscale, then I would not be able to bring back any of the red color. So what I'll do is I'll go over here to my HSL. And in the saturation area, I'll go ahead and desaturate every single one of these color ranges here to negative 100. Now, the image looks like it's in black and white, but because I used HSL and I didn't use black and white, Lightroom knows that I really might want part of this image in color. So now I'm going to use the HSL in combination with my adjustment brush here. And I'm going to preload my adjustment brush with a positive saturation. So I'll double click on the word effect to reset all of my sliders. And I'll increase my saturation. We might as well increase it all the way to 100 for right now. And let's zoom in. I'm just, just using Control plus or Command plus on Windows to zoom in. And now I'm using the space bar in order to move around my image. And basically, I just want to zoom in on this chair right here. And I'll do this rather quickly. I'd probably want to spend a little bit more time. But I'm going to start painting. And not a lot was happening. And that's because the flow is set way down on this brush. So in order to speed things up, I'm just going to set the flow up really high. In this case, I've set it up to 100 so that each time I click and paint with a brush, it's actually giving me 100% of the effect. In this case, it's giving me 100% of the saturation. So I'm really able to go in here and resaturate. Basically, I'm telling um, Lightroom that, yes, I know I told you to take that saturation down in the whole image, but now I'm going in and saying, well, I actually want that saturation in these areas right here. And if I click once and then hold down the Shift key and click again, Lightroom will actually create a straight line. It will draw a straight line between those two points. And if I find some areas that I've painted that I shouldn't have, obviously I can come over here to my eraser, get a really small brush here, and just go in and refine those. And like I said, I could spend a little bit more time, but I think you get the idea. Instead of actually converting your image to grayscale, what we do instead is we use this HSL, we decrease the saturation in all of the color ranges, and then we go with our adjustment brush and just paint in the colors in the area that we want it. And if we find that that's a little too strong, we can always go back at any time, grab our adjustment brush, make sure that we have targeted the adjustment that we make, and then just decrease the saturation a little bit in order to fade that so that it's not quite as vibrant. And if you wanted to bring back some of the color in the rest of the image, again, we'll just put that tool away. And we could come in here to HSL and just reintroduce some color in all of the color ranges here by just clicking in the saturation area. So as you can see, there's a ton of control, lots of special effects, lots of really great ways to use Lightroom in order to enhance your images to tell the story that you want to tell. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.